Number 10, Norman Osborn. Norman Osborn wasn't always a villain, but many things in his life shaped him to become the greedy, insane, and focused, iconic Spider-Man nemesis we know him as today. It all started when Norman was young. Hearing that his parents were having financial issues, he learned at a young age that it was important to look out for number one above all others to ensure his own survival. Number one is Norman Osborn, by the way. His father mistreated him and was known as a failure, and this drove young Norman to strive to do better than his old man, striving for excellence in all things at any cost. When his wife died, it only served to inspire Norman to throw himself into his work even more. He cut out his business partner and began searching for formulas that he could profit off of, ending up discovering and creating the Goblin Serum, which made him smarter and stronger, but at the cost of his sanity. Number nine, Harley Quinn. More of a psychological horror story as well. Harley Quinn ended up losing her sanity and parts of herself in her love of the Joker. It was her love for him that drove her to a life of crime and made her the villain initially that she became. She's now since found a way out of this darkness, dumped the Joker, and even moved more towards becoming a hero, even teaming up with Batman as his newest sidekick. But you can't deny how dark her origins were. In the limited series Harleen, we get a more sexy version of her fall into a life of crime and a fall into her love for the Joker. But even that shows just how much Harley spiraled down into the beautiful and freeing pit of insanity with Mr. J. It also tells us a tale of her being trapped in Arkham Asylum during a breakout with various villains around every corner, and not all of them are friendly towards Dr. Quinzel. In the end, she is forced to choose between the two sides of herself and ends up shattering into complete insanity after killing a security guard who she kind of considered to be her friend, turning away from her saner persona of Dr. Quinzel and fully becoming and embodying Harley Quinn. I just love too that the panel is like literally her shattering. Number eight, Prince Zuko. Okay, so while this might not be a comic book character, I still find Zuko of Avatar to have one of the most traumatic and horrifying stories out there, and I also just like Prince Zuko, so I want to talk about it. Not only that, but he's just a great villain because a lot of the reasoning behind who he is also helps to justify what he does, and makes him a better villain because of that. And that makes him a better villain. A great villain, in my mind, needs to have a motivation that you can actually connect with. Their need to do something that goes against every moral code that they have learned or that society has, has to feel justified to the point that you may even feel bad for them at times, or even find yourself rooting for them. After all, we aren't born villainous. It's usually a sense of injustice that makes us feel we have no other option but to break the rules, tear down the establishment, and question our own morals in order to get done what we need done. You have to be pushed to the brink to get to the point that you actually shift into a villain in reality. And Zuko definitely was that. A lot of what he does is that of wanting to win back his father's love, and because he is understanding afraid of his father as well. He became a villain as a result of his punishment at the hands of his father, where he was burned in a forced duel against him and then later exiled as well. Number seven, Carnage. Even before Cletus Cassidy was Carnage, he was terrifying and the villain only has become more terrifying ever since then. Cletus was born into a family with a history of mental health problems and from a young age, it seemed as though there was always something off about him. It's like he was destined to become a villain. He showed all the expectant signs of becoming a a psychotic, sociopathic serial killer, and, well, that's just what happened. He was raised by a woman who we can only assume was his grandmother, as his mother died seemingly from childbirth. He was also born in Ravencroft, so I feel like that is some kind of foreboding as to what type of child he could grow up to be. His supposed grandmother mistreated him while raising him, and he paid her back in kind by pushing her down the stairs. Yikes! From there, he went to live with a family who is believed to have been his biological father and his stepmother, though I don't think that's ever really confirmed. That also didn't end well. Roscoe, his apparent dad, mistreated him as well, and his stepmother ended up dead, caught in the middle of the conflict. Roscoe was arrested because of her death, and Cletus ended up at an orphanage. While there, he unleashed his wrath on fellow orphans and administrators, even killing a few outright, and eventually burned the orphanage to the ground. Seriously, this is just something out of a horror movie. Number six, The Broken. I don't know why, but this villain's tale just always sticks with me for some reason. No matter what? I just think it's that initial panel of Batman's like head and torso together, which is like separated from the rest of his body, but suspended with like thick coiled wires and he's in immense pain that really does it for me. It just is like, I don't know. I just think it's so scary. The Broken is an alternate version of Batman who comes from the dark multiverse. He appeared in the retelling of Nightfall where instead of Batman winning the day on his earth, he lost in the fight to reclaim Gotham against Azrael, who he'd appointed as his replacement after Bane 
broke his back. Azrael won and became Gotham's protector, Saint Batman, and Bruce became his permanent prisoner. His limbs were removed from his body, but he was kept alive, just as like a head and a torso, kept in immense pain on what I assume is like a life support machine, but also kind of a torture device. He suffered intense migraines and seizures while kept this way. Eventually he was freed by Bane's son and escaped Saint Batman, taking back Gotham, but this entire experience left him broken, turning him into an even worse villain than Saint Batman was. So he like reclaims the city, but you're like, oh no. Oh dear, not good. Number five, Superman. Wait a minute, what? Superman isn't a villain. Well, not in the main continuity, but in the alternate reality of Injustice, he most certainly is a villain. How did this come about? Well, after Superman was tricked into fighting Doomsday, only to realize he had been made to hallucinate by the Joker and Harley, who used fear toxin on him. What had actually been happening was that Superman had been fighting Lois Lane, not his nemesis Doomsday. He realizes this all too late, sadly, as he discovers he has killed Lois. Not only that, but she was pregnant. And not only that, but the Joker and Harley had also tied a trigger for a nuclear explosion to Lois's heart. As a result, when her heart stopped, Metropolis, Superman's shining city, was blown to bits. It's really no wonder he became such a cold and deadly villain. He felt that he needed to fix the world as a result of these events. Of course, he went about that in a way that I'm sure Lois would not have been proud of had she still been alive to see Superman fight in her and Metropolis's name. Number four, Killer Frost. Killer Frost was originally scientist Caitlin Snow, who had been on the hunt for a perpetual motion energy conducting machine that many believed to be a myth. She sought to continue the research of Dr. Louise Lincoln, who had been working to make such a machine, which she called a self-sustaining thermodynamic ultraconductor engine. Caitlin's colleagues warned her against following in Dr. Lincoln's footsteps, but she paid them no mind. When she finished the engine, they turned on her, revealing their true colors. They were actually working for the evil organization known as Hive, and sought to destroy Snow and Lincoln's work, preventing the invention from ever being used or discovered. They trapped Caitlin with in the engine and started it up in order to destroy her. Terrified, Caitlin panicked and tore out the wires for the coolant system. This had an unexpected result and Caitlin Snow found herself bonded with ice and basically became a heat vampire. With her new ice-based powers, she escaped and killed all of the hive agents. Craving heat as a result of her condition, she would later discover that exposure to Firestorm's powers temporarily reverted her to normal and would dedicate her life to pursuing him, seeking a permanent cure. Number three, Zombie Spider-Man. I know he's another alternate hero turned villain. But what can I say? They get some of the spookiest origins because they kind of have the most to lose. Heroes like have usually higher stakes than villains. When it comes to Spider-Man's origins in the zombie verse, he was of course infected with the zombie virus, which made him a villain. But as this change came upon him, he found himself tragically and horrifyingly feeding on his own family members that he tried desperately for years to keep safe. Spider-Man started off his brain and flesh eating spree by eating those he'd loved the most in a horrific twist. He devoured Mary Jane and his Aunt May, likely crying all the while, I imagine, but unable to stop himself. He was just so hungry. Number two, Bane. It's really no surprise that Bane became a supervillain considering he grew up in prison, serving time for crimes he did not commit, but that his father committed. Bane's father was a revolutionary who had escaped the prison, and when Bane was just 17, he was imprisoned in his father's place. He spent most of his life inside a cell that was connected to the ocean. All day he would spend in mind-numbing seclusion, alone in his cell, and at night he would have to swim for his life while trying to stay afloat above the water that filled up his prison cell almost to the very top, but not quite. Crabs and leeches would cling to his body, cutting him throughout each tormented night, and insects who happened to be sharing the cell with him would climb up on his face seeking refuge. Every moment he ever spent outside of his cell afterwards would be focused on becoming stronger and smarter, preparing himself to one day escape the prison and accrue power once outside its walls. Number one, Magneto. One of the scariest stories out there in terms of supervillain origins is that of Magneto, made more scary by the fact that it's actually based off of real world circumstances experienced by many victims of the events tied to World War II. Magneto grew up being trapped along with many of his family in a camp by World War II German soldiers. Now, I apologize for not being able to say the words that I would like to say here to give this topic the weight that I think it deserves. I think we all agree. But there are certain words and phrases that we are permitted from speaking on this platform, so I apologize for my lighter turn of phrase here and my potentially perceived levity. I promise I do take this subject very seriously. Um, and if you have problems with the fact that we can't say certain words, I would highly recommend that you 
contact the platform and let them know your thoughts on that. Because yeah, I think that's important to do. Young Magneto would not only have to suffer in these camps, but he'd also have to watch as one by one, his family members attempted to escape and often got so close to being truly free, only to be reined back in and pretty much all end up dead in the end. He was forced into taking care of the bodies and disposing of all who perished at the camp as well, becoming a Sonder Commando, which must have felt like psychological torture as well as being grueling work. Sonder Commandos were actually real world special units, by the way, that existed during World War II, made up of Jewish prisoners from the camps who were forced into disposing of the victims who had been killed in the camps, threatened with their own deaths if they refused the work. In the end, Magneto did escape, but even then he was met with tragedy. He and his love Magda would escape and start a family, finding a home in a village in the mountains. But after he was revealed to be a mutant, the people turned on him and his family, burning their home to the ground. As Magneto attempted to save his daughter, who was trapped on the upper floor of their home, soldiers attacked him, preventing him from doing so, and she died in the fire. Number 10, Doctor Strange. Doctor Stephen Strange was an accomplished and world-renowned surgeon, until a tragic car accident. While he survived the crash, the nerves in his hands were severely damaged, making it impossible for him to recover well enough to return to his work as a neurosurgeon. Strange was egotistical to the point that he refused to do any other work in the medical community, attempting to use all of his funds to try and find a cure for his hands, and eventually sinking into a deep depression and alcohol addiction. Previous to his accident, it was his parents' death and the fact that he found great success early on that caused him to become materialistic in his pursuits, caring less and less for his patients and more and more about the acclaim and the money that he was making. Eventually, he heard of the mystical power of the Ancient One and used his last bit of money to set out to see if they might possess healing abilities strong enough to heal him. From there he would become a reluctant, stubborn, and eventually extremely loyal and determined student and would go on to become the new Sorcerer Supreme and magical hero known as Doctor Strange. Number 9. Iron Man Tony Stark has led quite the privileged life, basically being born with a silver spoon in his mouth. So you might think he's got it made when it comes to superhero origins. But let's not forget what it took to get him to build and operate his Iron Man suit, and what inspired him to become a hero. Tony Stark was giving a demonstration of his technology to the military when there was an explosion. Stark was injured and taken prisoner by a terrorist who wanted to use his brilliant mind to have him create weapons for them. Shrapnel lodged into Tony Stark's chest, moved ever closer to his heart, and it was the help of another brilliant prisoner, Nobel Prize winner and physicist Ho Yinsen, whom Stark admired, that allowed Tony to survive and inspired him to build the Iron Man Mark I armor, which allowed him to escape but at the cost of Yinsen's life, and put him on the path to becoming a hero. Number 8. Rocket Raccoon Rocket Raccoon in the Marvel Cinematic Universe alludes to his character's dark origins when he gets into an argument with the other Guardians of the Galaxy, insisting they consider him to be a joke. and revealing that there is a lifetime of pain in his past which gives him the form and personality that he has today, as a being who was heavily experimented on, being torn apart and put back together more times than he can count. Previous to this origins though in the comics, Rocket was simply one of a group of animals given heightened intelligence and awareness by robotic beings, who sought to escape their duties of looking after mental patients in their care. Rocket was one of the animals who stepped in to take on these duties, later on however even even in the comics, while out exploring space, he would be abducted and taken to a place known as Lab World, where he was then studied and experimented on. Number 7. Two-Face Harvey Dent went from being on the side of the law and one of the biggest real life everyday fighters for justice in Gotham to becoming one of the city's most iconic villains. It all started when he was disfigured. During a trial, crime boss Sal Maroney threw acid in Dent's face, scarring him for life and driving him insane. Dent lost his faith in justice justice as a result of this incident and instead left it up to fate to decide whether he would behave heroically or criminally, often known for flipping a coin to decide his victim's fate. Number 6. Spider-Man Spider-Man's whole brooding and moody sensibility and his battle with depression, which would only grow over time, all stems back to his origins. The death and loss of Uncle Ben is what inspired Spider-Man to become a hero and also gives him a lifetime of weighty regrets. Uncle Ben's death could have been avoided in Spider-Man's mind if only he'd cared enough to use his powers to stop a thief in his path, who would shortly after end Ben's life. To Peter Parker, he may as well have pulled the trigger himself. This tragic and dark story would inspire the hero to use his powers more responsibly, but would also haunt him for the rest of his life. Number 5. 
Dr. Manhattan. John Osterman's origin story as Dr. Manhattan is truly horrific. John found himself trapped inside a test chamber when he went to retrieve his watch, as it underwent a scheduled experiment. The experiment caused John to be taken apart at an atomic level, removing his intrinsic field, which is a term used in Watchmen to describe what holds atoms together, the force that does that. It's not actually a true scientific term, fun fact. As such, he was granted powers over the intrinsic fields of all things, using his powers to build himself a body three months later and physically manifesting in the cafeteria of his workplace. John's life would be forever changed and in becoming a god, he would not only look different, but would also become less human as the years went on, experiencing a detached feeling from life on earth. Number 4. Batman Bruce Wayne was just a young boy when he lost his parents. They were both killed point blank in front of him one night after the family had left the movie theater where they just watched Zorro and attempted to take a shortcut down an alley. A thief named Joe Chill killed them during a robbery, leaving Bruce alone in the world save for the family butler Alfred who had become like a father to him. It was this tragic start to his life that caused young Bruce to grow up fast and a run in with a bat that inspired him to become the Dark Knight of Gotham known as Batman. It's also been argued countless times over that this traumatic event made young Bruce unstable, which is perhaps why he has turned to a life of vigilantism, unable to heal the mental wounds his parents' tragic deaths caused. Number 3. Gamora Gamora is the last surviving member of her race known as the Zen Hubaris. They were a peaceful people who were all killed by a religious order when they resisted their attempt at dominance in the galaxy. Thanos managed to save Gamora and raised her as his daughter, turning her into his own weapon, modifying her with tech to grant her superhuman abilities. He planned on using her to defeat the villain known as Magus, who was also Thanos' enemy. While Thanos seemed to occasionally show Gamora fatherly affection, there would come a time when she would turn on him acknowledging him as someone who had used her for his own means and denouncing her allegiance to him, seeing him for what he was, a mad tyrant and a villain who was selfish and cold hearted, seeking only to bring death to whatever planet, galaxy or universe he was in. Number 2. Raven If we go back to the original New Earth continuity, Raven's origins are pretty freaking dark. Her mother was part of a cult and when she tried to escape and leave, the members prevented her from doing so by summoning a powerful demon named Trigon. This demon then forcefully mated with her. From this, Raven was conceived. She was born Angela Roth and raised to control her emotions to help prevent her from losing control of her demonic powers and to basically prevent her from giving in to the dark side. She was sort of like a Jedi, but with a demonic heritage. When she learned of Trigon's evil plans, she attempted to stop him and sought help from the Justice League, who actually refused to help her because of her demonic heritage, prompting Raven to work harder to become a hero and putting her on a path to become one of the Teen Titans. Number 1. Spawn Spawn was originally Albert Al Simmons, an assassin who was murdered by his friend while on a mission. He then is condemned to a life in hell, but makes a bargain to return to the land of the living so that he can see his wife one last time. However, he must agree to become a hell spawn in order to do so. The unfortunate side effect of which, that he doesn't learn until later, is that he will forget his memory somewhat. So he returns to life, but only as a faint recollection of his past. And what's more, his body is still kinda undead, making him appear as a horrific monster. So even if he had remembered his wife's name straight away, he would not be able to reveal himself to her. When he finally does remember his wife, he discovers she is remarried to one of his friends and they now have a daughter. He also realizes that five years have passed since his death. Not what he had originally expected when he made that bargain. Spawn, lost in the world, is now forced to search for a new purpose while also conserving his powers as once they're fully used up, he will return to hell. Number 10. Swarm If you have a fear of bees, or more specifically mutated killer bees, then you might find the story of Fritz von Mayer to be terrifying. Mayer became a sometimes Spider-Man villain after his transformation into basically a horde of killer bees. He was a scientist in the employ of the German Axis forces during World War II. Not much is known of his backstory previous to that, but with unlimited funding, he set out to study poisons, toxins, and bees. Finding an apparently mutated hive of bees, he attempted to awaken their killer instincts and seize control of them. But 
His plan backfired and they ended up gaining back their killer instincts and using them to swarm and kill Mayer. Mayer's consciousness however became absorbed into the bees as his physical form died. And as such, he is now a man who is made up entirely of bees. If that isn't something out of a nightmare, I really don't know what is. Number 9. Swamp Thing Alec Holland is believed by Swamp Thing himself to be the man that the creature once was. Alec Holland and his wife were living out in the swamp and were both scientists who had developed a bio-restorative formula that would solve world hunger. However, goons were sent to sabotage and destroy the discovery during this original origin story. The goons put explosives in the lab and Alec woke up following the explosion covered in the bio-restorative formula. He ran out into the swamp but found himself merged with it, becoming an avatar of the green, merging with that swamp and becoming the monstrous creature known as Swamp Thing. Originally in the comics, Swamp Thing, believing it had once been Alec, was always trying to find a way to return to a more human state, longing to be mortal once more. Number 8. John Constantine We recently got an interesting look into John Constantine's origins in the new DC Black Label limited series Rise and Fall. Hellblazer Rise and Fall. That's the, that's the whole long title. This is a story divided up and told over the course of three books. In the first book, we are told of Constantine's backstory and everything that has shaped him into the lovable troublemaker of an occult detective that he has become today. His life started in the dark from the moment he was born. His mother passed away bringing him into the world, which set the stage for what his life would then be like. His father turned to drink and treated young John harshly, never once sympathizing with his son, which only motivated John to become more of a young vagabond, staying out and running around the streets of London late at night. We also learn of the tragic loss of one of his childhood friends in the book. Truly, it's a must read for Constantine fans or just for fans of good comics. Number 7. Batman The death of Batman's parents and the trauma he suffered from witnessing that as a young boy would forever change Bruce. It would turn him into the vigilante he is today and inspire him to set out on a mission to become the Dark Knight, dedicating his life to an intense training regimen and traveling the world to learn from a variety of masters on a variety of subjects, from detective work to martial arts to magic. Tragic. To this day, it's still the death of Bruce Wayne's parents that remains one of the most tragic events in his life, still haunting him to the point that he's even seen hallucinating about his parents' death while tripping on Joker venom during the current events of Joker War. Always tends to be the thing he comes back to, that and currently the loss of Alfred. Number 6. Sentry Robert Reynolds was a drug addict who snuck into a lab and discovered the experimental Golden Sentry Serum. Though the backstory he'd be given in the comics within the Marvel Universe later on would be much less dark. Consuming the serum granted, Reynolds Reynolds gained the power of a million exploding suns, making him one of the most powerful superheroes ever known. Although the Sentry was a hero who was known for his Superman-like extreme level of goodness, he had a dark secret, one that was unknown even to him for a very long time. Bob Reynolds suffered from a split personality disorder, in part brought on by the villain Mastermind's manipulations, which meant that he was not only capable of immense good, but immense evil as well, as his personality split into that of the superheroic Sentry and the powerful supervillain known as the Void. When it was revealed that Bob himself was also the greatest villain on the planet, he recruited the help of his superhero friends such as Doctor Strange and Mr. Fantastic to help everyone, including Bob, forget about the Sentry, so that the Void would also never return, making Bob, for a time, the greatest hero that the world forgot. Number 5. Rorschach Walter Kovacs was raised by a mother who mistreated him, basically resenting his very existence. This mistreatment inspired Walter to stand up to those who would hurt others. These beliefs led to Walter himself to brutally confront his own schoolyard bullies, even going so far as to blind one of them as a child. Walter became a sociopath because of how he was treated when he was younger, believing in a strict moral code and using that as his own vigilante compass to decide who should be punished and how severely. His mother was a prostitute and when he learned of her death at the hands of her pimp, who force fed her Drano to kill her, he only responded with one word, good. Ooh, dark. Number 4. Jessica Jones In the Netflix Jessica Jones series, we learn that Jessica Jones became a detective and hero in essence because of the fact that she was assaulted and mind controlled by Purple Man, who made her to do all sorts of things that she didn't want to do. In the Alias series, Jessica Jones attempts to confront her trauma, wrestling with just how much control Kilgrave actually had over her, and if it's possible that part of her motivation for all of the things he had her do could have actually come somehow from within herself. This is a common thing with victims of this type of assault, wondering about how much responsibility or control you actually had in that situation, and in a sense, blaming yourself for what happened to you. But beyond this, Jessica Jones's original origins, how she got her powers, actually involved a massive vehicular collision, where her entire family was killed except for her. And it's implied that she only survived because she was exposed to radioactive materials, whose containers were damaged in the accident, leaking out and interacting with Jessica. Jessica's original last name had been Campbell, and she didn't get her name Jones until she was later adopted by Alyssa Jones.
Jones and her husband after Jessica's family's death. Ugh. Actually, Jessica seems to be a bit of a cursed name in the Marvel Universe. There's a lot of Jessicas with dark origins. Number 3. Magneto Well known for a long time in the comics by his alias Eric Magnus Lenscher, Magneto's original name and origins revealed that he grew up as a young Jewish boy during World War II named Max Eisenhart. His family left Germany when things started to get bad, retreating to Warsaw where they lived in the Warsaw Ghetto. Eventually, Max was taken to the extermination camp at Auschwitz after he and his family attempted to leave the Warsaw Ghetto. Following his time at Auschwitz, Max shed his original name and adopted another so that he might better fit in with his wife Magda's Romani people. When it comes to Magneto's backstory, he is no stranger to discrimination and it is his suffering and the suffering of others that he has witnessed that has inspired him to become the villain and the sometimes hero that we know today. Number 2. Red Hood When it comes to Jason Todd's transformation from Robin to Red Hood, there was a ton of dark events that came into play here, which caused Jason Todd to go from hero to villain and then of course to anti-hero. Todd was seemingly one of the permanent deaths in comics after he was beaten beaten to near death by the Joker following being sold out by his own birth mother who he then even still fought to free before being killed in an explosion. We thought we'd never see him return but he was later brought back using the Lazarus Pit and then was trained by Dukra of the All Cast and joined the League of Assassins for a time. When he finally returned to Gotham it was originally as the villain Red Hood seeking brutal justice and later on as Joker would say in Three Jokers book one becoming one of his own villainous creations. Ooh so dark when you realize you've become a thing you didn't want to be in someone evil made you that. Eee. Number 1. Wolverine Wolverine has more trauma in his life than all the X-Men put together. Actually, he's probably got more trauma in one pinky than all of the X-Men. The only thing that protects Wolverine from the darkness of his own multi-chapter tragic origins is the fact that his brain actually also uses his healing factor to basically rid him of undesirable or painful memories. Young James Hallett's powers first manifested when his birth father killed his foster father, the husband of his mother. In a rage, James used his bone claws to kill his birth father, Thomas Logan, and his mother, still recovering from the loss of her firstborn son, severely traumatized, then took her own life. There are a lot of things that came after that when it comes to Wolverine's story and his past, pretty much all of them being wrapped up in some kind of traumatic experience. Number 10, Hulk. Bruce Banner is still the Hulk in this reality, but instead of being in the wrong place at the wrong time and ending up being exposed to gamma radiation, which would transform him into the Hulk against his will, he was a researcher working for S.H.I.E.L.D. and with the Ultimates to try and rediscover the Super Soldier Serum. Yeah, in the Ultimates, much like in the MCU, everything is kind of connected by this one single thread, this one purpose, the Super Soldier Serum. Bruce would believe he had uncovered the serum and decided against S.H.I.E.L.D.'s better judgement to test it on himself. This would turn him into the monster we'd come to know as the Hulk, but only when Bruce was using the serum. He could not change at will and his transformation was not initially triggered by intense emotions or rage. However, he would then blend the actual super soldier serum formula extracted from the blood of the revived Captain America, Steven Rogers, with the Hulk serum, which would end up resulting in his transformations becoming a permanent aspect of his DNA. No Number 9. Electra. While still super heroically fanciful, Electra's backstory in the 1610 universe is just a touch a touch more grounded than her 616 counterpart. Instead of her mother being murdered and dying a very violent death, she instead died of breast cancer. Electra was not made to train in martial arts when she was young, but rather enjoyed martial arts, and so she trained in martial arts out of her own interest, with Bruce Lee acting as an inspiration for her, as a fan of his. She ended up becoming a villain all because of a fellow university student who was a jerk, the wealthy Calvin Langstrom who tormented her at school because she was willing to stand up to him and defend others against him. Because of this, he made Electra's life a living hell, attacking one of her friends and even hiring thugs to burn down her father's laundromat business as well as her family home. It was because of this that Electra turned to the dark side. Frustrated that there was no justice for her or any of Langstrom's victims, no matter the crime that he committed due to his wealth and his connections, she ended up attempting to kill him, setting off on a darker path than her fellow friend and vigilante, Daredevil. At one point she's like, Daredevil, are you coming with me or are you going to help this Langstrom guy? And he's like, I'm going to help this guy. I was like, dude, just go with Electra. Electra's on like a, she's bad, but she's trying to be good. You know what I mean? I don't know. I love bad girls. I'm like, she bad, but she good. And friends, before we move on to the next spot, if you love this list as much as I loved writing it for you, please be sure to show us some love by giving this video a thumbs up. Also give it a thumbs up because I want to tell you more origins. And so if you give it a thumbs up, there's a better chance that'll happen.
Number eight, Hawkeye. Hawkeye is actually a lot more mysterious in the Ultimate Universe than the version we have from the main continuity comics. It's even been implied before that Clint Barton might not actually be Hawkeye's true name, but even an alias from the name he was given at birth. So mysterious. Instead of being someone who picked up his skills from swordsmen around the carnival circuit, Hawkeye was a former Olympic archer turned black ops agent who worked for S.H.I.E.L.D. The Earth 1610 story from Hawkeye more mirrors his MCU story where he ends up settling down and having a family, but tragically in the Ultimate universe, when the Ultimates are betrayed by fellow member Black Widow, Hawkeye's family is killed and he is kidnapped, tormented and interrogated by Natasha's true allies. Don't worry though, he manages to escape. Thank goodness. With only his fingernails as weapons. That's how you know you're cool if you can just fight with fingernails. I don't think I could ever do that. Although mine are pretty sharp, so maybe. Number seven, Bucky Barnes. As opposed to being the camp's mascot like he was in the golden age of Marvel Comics, Bucky here was a young friend of Steve's who joined him on his journey in the military working as a press photographer. Makes sense. Bucky would not go missing before Steve or actually go missing at all. Instead, it would be Steve who went MIA and was presumed dead, and Bucky who had to live with this and move on. Bucky Barnes would not become the Winter Soldier, but instead would live a relatively normal life, returning home and bonding with Roger's fiance, Gail. In fact, the two grew so close that they ended up in a romantic relationship, and Buck would marry Gail instead. By the time Steve returns from the ice, Barnes is now an old man. I like this reality where like Bucky just gets to grow up and like have a normal life. It's pretty cool. Number six, Black Widow. In the reality of Earth 1610, Black Widow never truly reformed, but instead was a spy and villain the whole time. <gasps> Gasp. It turned out that she was a double agent who was only pretending to serve the interests of the United States. While posing as one of their heroes, she was actually still loyal to Russia and the antagonistic team known as the Liberators, of which she was also secretly a member. Shh, don't tell anyone. Her goal was to destroy the Ultimates, and after winning over their trust and even becoming engaged to Iron Man, she betrayed the Ultimates and turned on them, revealing her true colors. Of course, she may have revealed those true colors a little too soon, as Iron Man easily apprehended her and turned her over to the authorities, but not before she could kill his butler Jarvis in cold blood. R.I.P. Jarvis. Number five, Spider-Man. While Peter Parker's story was not too different from his 616 counterpart, he wouldn't end up being the only Spider-Man in the Earth of 1610. And in fact, Peter would eventually leave the mantle passing it on to someone in his place. Someone new and very different from our Earth 616 Spidey. Yep, we are talking about the beloved Miles Morales. Miles was introduced in the Ultimate Universe and became such a fan favorite that he ended up moving over to Earth 616. Even even after the ultimate line was ended. Miles' backstory was that he was a teenage kid who was bit by a genetically enhanced spider exposed to the Oz formula while he was visiting his criminal uncle, Aaron Davis. Miles was your average, awkward, but lovable hero who happened to be a teenager caught in the middle of somewhat of family drama, with his uncle being a criminal and his dad Jefferson drawn into crime alongside his brother Aaron, who ended up working in secret as Fury's eyes and ears in the criminal world, but then later decided to leave it all behind and become a police officer instead. Number Number four, Valkyrie. Valkyrie had a very different story than our 616 counterpart. Instead of being an Asgardian inhabiting the body of Barbara Norris, who we know as Brunhilde, she was just Barbara Norris, a 19 year old girl who was basically obsessed with superheroes but who had no powers of her own. She was a big Thor fan, and so she kind of decided to imitate his look, dressing up like a scantily clad, sort of Norse goddess or warrior. Barbara did have some skills as a martial artist in training, but was not nearly as experienced as she claimed to be. She wouldn't receive powers until Loki tricked her and her team, the Defenders, into pledging loyalty to him in exchange for said powers. They did not know that Loki was Loki at the time. Valkyrie's gifted powers would grant her superhuman strength, durability, and would allow her to fly. Number three, Iron Man. Iron Man's initial backstory, which got retconned into just being basically a weird anime show, was a lot different than his 616 counterpart. I know that technically this is no longer canon in terms of his backstory within the 1610 universe, as instead his initial origins was moved over to Earth 55921, but before that happened, before it was retconned away, it was canon in the 1610 universe, and I like to remind everyone of just how gloriously bizarre it was. So here we go. Orson Scott Card was the writer behind the series, a sci-fi writer who you might 
lucky to recognize the name of as he is the author of many other acclaimed science fiction works such as Ender's Game, which if you are like me, you read Ender's Game in school and you were like, this book's actually pretty good. I don't know if that's what happened to you, but that was my story. I feel like that's actually maybe why I like sci-fi today. That might have been the beginning. Maybe. That and Stargate. The Ultimate Iron Man series, however, ended up being a little too out there for comic book fans in terms of what it offered when it came to shaking up Tony's origins. Shook it up a little too much. Tony here was a child who was altered while in his mother's womb by a lab accident. He ended up being born with neural tissue all over him, which made him extremely sensitive to the world around him, but also made him hyper intelligent. His father Howard would create a liquid suit to protect his son from the world he was so sensitive to, but this suit would have its drawbacks and would also make Tony appear blue. So there you go. <laughs> Number two, Nick Fury. Nick Fury was changed quite a bit in the Ultimate Universe. This is 616 Nick Fury, a former World War II soldier turned super spy whose life was saved by the Infinity Formula. This is 1610 Nick Fury, a former World War II soldier who worked alongside Wilson Fisk's grandfather and Wolverine at the time, but who was taken in by the US military and forcibly experimented on as part of Project Rebirth. In fact, this version of Nick Fury from the Ultimate Universe has an origin story that kind of echoes that of Isaiah Bradley of Earth 616, one of the first super soldiers. In fact, I believe his origins came out only a few years prior to this origins, which was added in sort of later. 2008, we got it for Nick Fury. And I think for Isaiah, we got it like, I want to say 2003. 1610 Nick Fury would be altered by the serum he was given, which of course was the super soldier serum, but he would use his enhanced strength and abilities to help his fellow prisoners escape. This version of Fury was also modeled after Samuel L. Jackson, who would later end up being promised a part in potential future films in order to help make amends after Jackson noticed that Marvel had basically used his likeness in the Ultimate Universe without asking him first. But don't worry, it all worked out. No one got really mad, I don't think about it, so yay. Number one, Black Knight. Dane Whitman has such a random story in the Ultimate Universe. In the main continuity, he is a more medieval feeling hero who fights with an ancient cursed sword that causes him to kind of lose sanity and become more rabid almost each time he uses it. In the Ultimate Universe, he became more machine than man. Originally, he was a man who served in the military but became a quadriplegic after saving his fellow soldiers in battle. He he would then become more of a mech with a human mind, but was considered too insane to actually be used for the team that he'd been recruited on, the West Coast Ultimates. As a result, he spent much of his life inside a stasis tube until he was intended to be used as a weapon against the Ultimates during the events of Earth's 1610 Civil War story. Such a random story. What does this have to do with Black Knight at all? From 616, I don't know. 